Hello everybody, this is Mr. Rob and welcome back to another episode of the Athletics Franchise here on MLB The Show 24 as we have reached an exciting point in the middle of the season. It's the All-Star break where we take a look at some of the All-Stars and stuff like that. But before we even get there, there's one thing we got to cover. That is the MLB Draft. It is time for the 2025 MLB Draft as we'll get to take a look at the newest A's players that are getting ready to join the organization. It is our second draft in the series, which is kind of exciting. So today, before we get to the draft, we're going to look at 38 prospects who I believe could potentially be future A's and even future big leaguers around Major League Baseball. So if you're excited for this one and getting to learn some of these prospects, make sure you drop a like and you subscribe down below, especially if you want more baseball content. Now, before we actually jump into the actual prospects, we have gone through one draft already in this series, and we've already seen it start to play dividends. Last year, we had the number four overall pick, and with that pick, we took shortstop Robbie Martin from the University of Georgia, who has already been a welcome addition to the major leagues. He skipped all of the minors. He made the team out of camp, and he's been good, hitting 284, has yet to hit a major league home run, but unfortunately, he's still out for two to three weeks with a torn groin. So we cannot wait to get Richie or Robbie Martin, excuse me, back onto the team. In the second round, we went shortstop again. We took Richie Veach from Arkansas. He's been down in AAA, started the season in AA. Hasn't played all that well in AAA, but could potentially be a call-up in the near future. He's progressing, other than his contact versus lefties, um, pretty nicely so far. Other players we took, we took in the competitive rounds. Balance round B selection. We took first baseman Angelo Jaquez, who has split time so far between at double A and triple A. He's got D potential, but he's got a very solid bat, so maybe he could one day make a DH. Third round last year, we took Robbie Francisco, who is one of our top prospects now. He's been tearing it up in double A with a 207 ERA in that span. He's had a short stint at triple A, it wasn't as good as his double A stint, so. Been keeping him down here with the Rock Hounds, but he could be a major leaguer at some point, especially if we need help at pitching. His 9 and Velo could potentially be that guy. Fourth round, we took Luis Pereira from Florida Atlantic, another starting pitcher who is in single A. He's a 56 overall B potential guy. He's got a long ways to go. And then in the sixth round, or the fifth round, we took starting pitcher from Stony Brook. We took, um, where is he at? Sean Arieo. Arellano, sorry, cannot speak. Uh, he's been at double A as well. He's been pitching pretty solid. And then finally, in the sixth round, we took a reliever from the Netherlands. We took Luis Del Villar, who has been in um, single A. So that was our draft picks last year. So let's take a look at some of the prospects in this draft class, shall we? Now, before we go position by position, I do want to take a look at the top five players in this draft class. And I feel like this is a very interesting draft. I don't think it's really that loaded. I think this is overall a weak class. But if there was one area that shows out more than others, it is the pitching. There is a lot of good pitching prospects, which we'll spend most of this preview in, including the top prospect in baseball, Ronald Castro, a closing pitcher from Puerto Rico, who's got really good stuff. Could potentially be a closer for the future. I don't see him needing a lot of time in the minors as well. As the Mariners do have the number one pick, it could go Castro. Um, unfortunately, though, he is injured, so he failed his physical. So maybe that will help him to slide down boards. And if he was the number four pick, we might end up taking him. The second guy is starting pitcher Aaron Barry from Murray State Juco College in Oklahoma. There's a lot of top guys going the Juco route in this class, which is an interesting take, but he's a very good, well-rounded pitcher. Uh, doesn't have the best break, so to speak, as he throws a fastball, a sinker, a changeup, and a cutter. So no looping curveball, but another very good starting pitcher, easily probably the best starting pitcher prospect in this draft class. Um, so he could definitely go in the top five. I don't see him falling to us at four, unfortunately. Then we see Randy Irvin as well from Ohio State. He's... I would say almost on par with Barry. I do think Barry is slightly better than Randy Irvin, but another guy who could have really solid potential. Maybe might need only one season in the minor leagues before he gets up. Great strikeout rate. Everything else is pretty solid and above average across the board, and he should be able to go deep into ball games. 
Then we have closing pitcher Javier Aparicio from Indian Hills Community College, the JUCO College in Iowa, as he's another guy who's a very good closer, um, 21 years of age. He should have pretty solid potential, probably more of a wild card between these top guys. We haven't really scouted him, so to speak, but his stats look good. Not going to win you away with his velo, though. He's got a fastball, a splitter, and a changeup. Fastball is only topped out at 95. But overall, he should be a solid relief pitcher. Just do you want to go relief pitcher at the top? Not sure I would. And then finally, rounding out the top five is the only position player at the top, Dan Leon, a 19-year-old from Venezuela who played a year just on a travel team for the country. He's more of a defensive guy, I would say. He's not as well-rounded with the bat, so I don't know if he's necessarily a top five in my book. But... He's apparently listed top five by our scouts and top six by baseball. So something is there with Dan Leone, but I don't know if I'd make him a top five guy. We'll go by position now, starting off with the starting pitchers. Like I said, we'll spend majority of our time here. We've already seen Barry and Irvin. Another guy to look out for is Ron Maryville. He's a guy who could be a steal and we could potentially take. He's listed as 37th in baseball, but we our scouts have him at six. So he could go to us especially since we need some help in the pitching. He's an 18-year-old from the Dominican Republic who should have pretty solid potential. He's got good V already on his pitches. There's a fastball, a slider, a changeup, and a sinker. Um, you know, like I said, our pitching staff needs help, and Ron Maryville's a guy that could potentially be a good starting pitcher for the time being, or for the long term, I should say. Other starting pitchers, though, in case you didn't want him, there's Jacob Shepard, a 20-year-old. who went to Tennessee Community College, another JUCO guy not as well rounded as some of the other top pitchers we've seen but he's not the guy who should go in the first round his strikeouts and his pitch control is a little lower but it, his walks and hits are pretty solid which is something that we have struggled as in the organization then you go to rico duarte a guy we've almost fully scouted from cuba who our scouts have better than where a lot of people rank him we have two picks in the top 40 so maybe is if he slides to the second one we could go with duarte another solid pitcher maybe even a little bit better than shepherd a year younger as well six four a tall body as well won't strike out a ton of batters he's got a fastball a slider a fastball and a changeup. but uh another guy a guy we've scouted fully he's asking for 1.8 million in bonus demand could be our second first round pick and then you also go down the board as well. There is Ellis Hutchins, a guy we fully scouted. He's actually ranked the fourth best in baseball, but our scouts have him at 25, and I think that's a good spot for him. He went to Westmoreland County Community College, another Juco pitcher in Pennsylvania. I don't think he's as polished as some of the other guys, and I don't know if he will really fall to us because we have the fourth pick and the 40 pick. So there's a lot of guys in that 20-30 range who we're not going to talk about today that will probably just not be available for us and i don't want to reach for them and i don't think they'll slide so some of those guys we are missing out on ivan rosales is a guy who's ranked draft 93 but our team has him at 32 an 18 year old from venezuela and i do like what i see here he's got very good stuff up and down the board 6-2 throws righty he has a fastball a curveball a slider and a two seamer He's just, like I just said, in that weird category where his draft rank is a 93, but it doesn't necessarily mean he's going to fall there. A lot of teams will go after the guy they want in MLB The Show, and if he's ranked 32 for us, I don't know if he'll fall to those 40 picks that we had. Because we had the 40th and the 41st pick. I would love to make one of those picks, Ivan Rosales. I just don't know if it will be able to, but I would like to see him in our organization. Next starting pitcher is Jason McFarland. Uh, he's another guy who outperforms his ranking. He's from New Life Christian Academy High School in North Carolina. So a high school pitcher uh, who's pretty solid. Again, just falls in that same category, kind of like Rosales. Not probably as good as Rosales, but just 70 ranks, but in the 30s in terms of our draft rank. I don't know if he would for sure be a 40, 41st pick for us. I would like to see him slide to our second round selection. But at least he's got a pretty safe potential. He's a guy that you know is not going to be worse than a C. So I don't know if Jason McFarlane will be on the team, but he will should be a good pitcher for somebody. Johnny Tatum's a guy that I like a lot. Now, he is in that range that could potentially be with one of those two selections. A senior from Alabama. He's got very good velocity, break, strikeouts, and walks. So basically, he's inverted with a lot of the pitchers we have. A lot of guys 
Uh, a lot of guys that we have give up a lot of hits and walks. This guy doesn't give up any walks. He throws five pitches as well, a fastball, a slider, a changeup, a curveball, and a cutter. He's a little bit of a wild card in terms of his stats not being there, but he is a four-year senior, and his potential at the lowest is an 88. I feel like that's hard to pass up. Yes, he's on the older side, but if you want a surefire good pitcher, Johnny Tatum could be your guy. He did also opt out of his physical, though, so that is a little scary, and that might be why some teams aren't on high on him. Go a little bit deeper, we got Pete Lockett in the 60s. So this is where we started to get into the second, third round selections. He is from the University of Southern California. A solid pitcher up and down the board. We didn't really scout him that much, but you know, a pretty solid middle of the round guy to look out for. Jose Iglesias, we did scout. So he's a lot like Tatum. He's got a pretty solid potential. Yes, he's already 23, hailing from Cuba. But again, if you just want a pitcher who should be a surefire thing in these later rounds, Jose Iglesias, could be that guy. He could be in that same range that we took Robbie Francisco. Last starting pitcher we'll take a look at is Kirby Ladd, a guy who was not ranked by a lot of scouts, but is in our top 69s. He's a solid, you know, B potential guy. You know, again, another, you know, safe pick in the later rounds, hailing from the University of Nebraska. He strikes out well. He doesn't walk a lot of batters. Everything else is a little bit raw. Fastball, changeup, sinker, curveball. But again, just a safe pick in maybe one of the later rounds. Let's switch over to relief pitcher. The top relief pitcher guy is Garrett Rogers, a 19-year-old from Mississippi Community College, Juco in Mississippi. Uh, he's the best non-closer listed, and apparently our scouts like him in the top 10. I don't think we'll necessarily pick Rogers, but that's good news for him, and he could potentially go to a rival. And a lot of these relief pitchers should progress relatively nicely. Just that walks, though, is really scary for me. I don't know if I want to see a well below average to below average walk that high in the draft. Another relief pitcher to take a look at, Mitchell Woodard, Woodard who's probably going to be a B potential. He's in that 50s range, could be a second round, maybe third round pick if he slides. He's very good overall. He hails from Missouri. So I do like him a lot, 23 years of age. There's another guy from Missouri, his actual roommate as well, Omar Marquez who is probably not as good as his roommate in Woodard, but another guy you could take in the later rounds and be a pretty sure thing. You'll need some time to grow, but he doesn't give up a lot of home runs. He's very elite in that category, and his hits is pretty solid as well. Walks a little low, but you know that's kind of what you expect sometimes in the later rounds. Going over to closing pitchers, there's no other closing pitchers that I like other than the top two that are in our thing. And then we get over to the batters, the position players, which I feel like this is where the class is really weak. There's not a lot of top so-called like hitters in this draft class. I mean, we only have two catchers that we've actually found in the class. Gary Coggin being the top one from Faith Christian Academy in Pennsylvania. He should be a top catcher, but I feel like we're pretty deep at catcher, which is why I didn't scout much. We have Langoliers, Soderstrom, and then Daniel Susak in the minors, who should be up at some point. So I'm not really going to talk much about the catchers. First base, Ryan Oda's been playing pretty good, and there's not many good first basemen that I like. Charlie Rowe is the top guy, and I think he's a solid bat overall, especially being 18 years old from Jamaica. He's got some room to grow. So I think some team that needs a first baseman should take Charlie Rowe. I don't think we will, though, however. I'd like to see a little bit more power out of our first base spot. So not really much to talk about our first base either. Second base, we got Vernon Iskibo, who leads the way over there. You know, Zach Geloff is young. He's coming off of an all-star season. So not necessarily sure if we need any middle infield depth as well, considering we drafted our top two guys at shortstop last season. Uh, and he's an okay bat. He should be pretty solid for contact. Another second baseman, though, that I do kind of like is Domingo Cuevas, who's right behind him. Him or Esquivel could be the top two second baseman off the board. He hails from Cuba. A very fast player, good contact bat. In my opinion, maybe even better than a Skeevil. Moving over to third base now, that's currently hosed by Gio Urshela on a one-year deal. Then Jacob Wilson, our top prospect in the organization, who just got the call. So I do think we're set on third base, but let's still touch on a couple of players. Dwight Childress is the top guy over here. He's a pretty solid bat, can actually hit for power. 5'7 as well from Severin Point High School. So... Very interesting that the 5'7 guy is one of the best power hitters we've seen so far. But he hits lefties really well. He has a lot of room to go, though. I don't think he'll be a major leaguer within two or three seasons. He's going to take some time to develop. 
but when he finally reaches that peak, I could see Childress being a solid third baseman. He's probably not my favorite third baseman, though. I like DJ Mars, especially as maybe a second, third round guy. He comes from the University of Kentucky. You know, he's got a very good power bat. Not necessarily the best hitter, but he can hit some dingers also at 5'7". So we got some short third baseman in this class. So if you just want a power bat, maybe even play him at DH, DJ Mars could be a guy. Also, there is Maxwell Sosea from Corona High School in Kentucky as well. I think he's probably my favorite of the third baseman. You know, he hits lefty, very good power, good contact, good vision, good discipline. Gonna need some work in the minors, but especially in that 100 range, that is like third, maybe even fourth round. I can see us taking Maxwell Sosea at that point. Shortstop, I'm not really looking at shortstops this year considering we took top two of our picks last year were shortstops and as well as having you know, Daryl Hernia is there as well, and then a couple of other shortstops. Nick Allen there. I don't necessarily, Logan Davidson technically is listening at shortstop, so not necessarily in need of a shortstop, but Robbie Whitey is the top guy. He's a very good shortstop, a very good defensive glove from Northwestern. He hits from both sides of the plate as well. So, you know, he's a very good prospect, just not a guy that we need. Uh, Edgar Aquino is another shortstop to look at maybe a little bit down the board it's towards the end of the first round he hits better than whitey he's an 18 year old from cuba five seven another short guy can play some defense so again needs a little bit of work with what he has but it could be a better prospect than robert whitey then we get to the outfield which i do believe especially at left field is where the majority of the talent is i do think if the position players even though it's a weak class most of them are in the outfield, which is kind of where we need help because, you know, we sent Seth Brown down to AAA. We've kind of been hodgepodge out there and left. Soderstrom has gotten a lot of action out there. We've seen uh, Jacob Wilson play there as well. So we could potentially be in need of a top left fielder. And the top guy on the board is Ollie Graham, who is a pretty solid bat to say the least. He's from University of California, Los Angeles, UCLA. And he could be a guy that we take with that number four overall pick. I do think there's a good chance we take him. He's got a pretty solid bat. You know, his potential is at the lowest of B. Could potentially be an A. And I honestly don't think he needs a lot of time at 21 years old. He could be like Robbie Martin, where we see him in the next year. So is Ollie Graham one of our top guys? I would say most definitely. Behind him is Moses Meadows from Chino Hills High School. Yes, the same high school the balls went to. Uh, he is another solid bat, not as good, I would say, as Ollie Graham, but a couple of years younger. Probably doesn't have that immediate impact, but a lot of scouts are high on him. And if he falls to our second first round pick, you know, maybe we do go Moses Meadows. But I don't know if he'll necessarily reach the end of the first round. Also, Greg Rivera is a good guy. We didn't scout him, but he's more of a second round player who's got a very good pop to his bat and can play some defense hailing from Venezuela. So again, that's a pretty solid work. A lot of his other bat needs some help. I don't think he'll be a very good average hitter, but he should be good for a couple of dingers, which reminds me of a lot of what we had in Seth Brown. So not necessarily sure if we need a Rivera, but you know, a solid prospect nonetheless. A couple more left fielders to take a look at. Aiden Montero we have fully scouted. He did opt out of his physical, but he's hailing from Harvard Westlake High School in California. Kind of the opposite than the left fielders we've taken a look at. He hits a very good contact, not necessarily the best power bat, and he's very disciplined at the plate. So I do think, you know, with the speed and stealing, maybe with his arm strength as well, he could play some center field. Uh, I do think maybe that's where his future could be, especially, you know, you usually want your corner outfield guys to have a little more pop than that. But Aiden Montero is a solid contact bat in the outfield. And the final left fielder we'll take a look at is Gustavo Guillen, who could be a later round selection. Another solid, pretty good contact bat. Not necessarily the best arm, um, but you know the Venezuelan could potentially be a good selection later in the draft. Uh, just doesn't have the bat um, power-wise. Not gonna hit a lot of home runs, kind of like Montero. Switching over to center field, we have Esturi Ruiz, who's had a very solid season. Unfortunately, he is dealing with an injury, but I do like what we got out there. Um, Dan Leon is the top guy. We've already taken a look at him. I do like Gary Boswell as well, though. Gary Boswell as well. I uh, didn't mean to do that. Uh, maybe as one of our second round picks, he is very good bat potential. I do think he needs a little bit of time in the minors, but at 18 years old with that solid speed, I would like to maybe get Boswell with our second first round pick. Now, MLB does have him ranked at 13, 
So I'm not sure if the Magnolia Heights High School native will fall to our second pick, but if he's there on the board by the time we come around again, Gary Basel might be a solid player to take. Another center fielder to take a look at, Sherman Sherrick, a little bit down into the later rounds from Wichita State. Solid overall bat. I would say he's a pretty sound, fundamentally player at 6'3", 232 as well. That's tall for a center fielder, and he's got some good range, so an intriguing prospect. Ending up with right field, though, the top guy, Lance Matson. Uh, all four of the guys we're going to take a look at are international, this guy from Canada. He's the top-rated right fielder. He's got good speed, pretty sound as well. Just going to need a lot of work in the minors. You see a lot of red currently where he's at, but could potentially be at that high potential. Don't think we'll take him, though. Uh, another guy, Rene Ortega, who I do like more than Matson. The bat is very much high in terms of his potential, which is very intriguing considering he's ranked 61st, 35 by our scouts. Another outfielder I could see taken in our second or third pick. The Puerto Rico 18-year-old has very good upside, and I might want to tap into that. Fernando Rodriguez right behind him as well, kind of in the same boat. It's not as good as Ortega, but uh, the 18-year-old from Venezuela has pretty solid upside. Just needs a lot more work, I would say, than Ortega. And the last right fielder we'll take a look at is Bob Rosales, who is a pretty sound guy hailing from Puerto Rico. Uh, he is 22. I don't think he'll be major league ready for a couple of seasons, so you might not get him until you're 25, 26. But he's very safe in terms of his potential. You know you're probably going to get a C potential guy. It's probably not going to be a straight-out bust. Will he ever reach the majors? You don't know, but, you know, especially for those late-round picks, if you just want a safe guy, maybe you want to go Bob Rosales. So there are the top 38 guys that I want to take a look at. Not necessarily the top 38 prospects in all of the draft, but 38 guys that I think could potentially land with the athletics or maybe make an impact around the league. So in the comments, let me know which guy you like the best. The draft will be this Friday. I think I'm going to premiere it. If you guys want to see a premiere for it, please let me know in the comments section below. But I cannot wait to get into another draft and get even deeper into this franchise. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, make sure you drop a like and you subscribe down below, especially if you want more franchise content. This is Mr. Rob, and I'll see you in the next one.